With NFR Extra, we're going to take you behind the scenes in a way you've never heard before. Every two weeks, you're going to hear personal conversations with the icons and personalities that make up the world's richest and most prestigious rodeo. NFR Extra, all dirt, all rodeo, all year. Man, Robbie, I, did, you know, I gotta st- stop. I gotta stop this man, Robbie. Like, ah, oh, it's all right. Hell, yeah, I'm no, used to it. It's that's your go sign. Yeah, it is. It's it's. We're starting this thing, and I mean, here we are. The once again, Rodeo Houston live stage is rocking that Cowboy Christmas. It is. You can hear it thumping. I bet y'all can too. Yeah, I mean, I hope you can feel it because we can. And thank goodness, goodness for this Bloomer Studio. That yep. Randy built us with this soundproof because I mean, we're right next to the liner yes. right here. Uh, well, speaking you know what, of that, <laughs> speaking of Randy Bloomer. It's one of our guests. Yep. And uh, well, you're gonna, well, I you're gonna find out a lot with, well, Randy, where all this came from, why trailers, why why bloomer trailers. I thought that was very. I had no idea yeah. of that, but that's why he didn't just do this to make money in an adventure. No. You know, I mean, he he in the way he did it to protect a horse and yep. You know, and then we divvy off into, you know, his his fixing to be probably son-in-law and yeah. and um. Sage and his plane crash. And plane crash. That was very interesting. Yeah. You could feel. I was. I felt like a little kid right here listening. To I story. know. I did too. I forgot yeah. we were even recording. And, yep. And I think that. And then, of course, and then we move over to Clint, and we get to yep. talk about the '80s bronc riding stuff and yep. how it's evolved and everything. And he he's pretty tight. It, yeah. Knit at first, and then he loosened on up. And we, you know, and started learning. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. Was, you know, you will finally learn what X and three means. And I know now. <laughs> I know. I could see it in your eyes. That was pretty cool because you were like, oh, man, I finally. It's like a math problem went off. Absolutely. And then the other part is, you know, he talks about Benny Binion, his yeah. relationship there, and, and kind of the really expands. And we've heard this a lot, the, the hospitality that Mr. Binion has provided back in the day and what Mr. Gong has took. And obviously, when you go Absolutely. to South Point, you, you, you get that. Yes, it was it was an amazing interview. I think you're gonna like them. And thank you guys. We've been getting a lot of good mm-hmm. uh, feedback from our our interviews and stuff that people are actually listening. Yep, and they're staying hooked. And um, I hope we've had some great guests this week. We've got some special stuff tomorrow. Oh yeah. And um, you know it's it's been a it's been a great week here. Yeah. So enjoy this episode. <laughs> Brylan Bentley with Rodeo News of the Week. On December 14th in Las Vegas, you can find Cowboy Christmas. It's all here at the Las Vegas Convention Center, South Halls. Doors open at 9 a.m. Cowboys for Conservation Calcutta on the Rodeo Live Stage, 11 a.m. Outside the Barrel with Flint Rasmussen, 12 o'clock. Keeping It Country, host Andy Griggs, 115. Opening Gold Night, the 10th round where we will crown our world champions. Now, let's rewind to last night's rodeo. Bright Lights of Las Vegas, round number eight of the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo. It did not disappoint. We had some co-champions in terms of rounds, but, you know, lots to talk about. When we get to the bull riding, it's, you're just going to be like, holy cow. <laughs> yeah, I'm still like, <laughs> holy cow. That was good. Clayton Biglow has now won first outright or split first in the last four rounds. Four for four, winning three of those outright. 90 points for him on Showstopper last night. You know, Casey Field holds the record on the most points on 10 head at 860 and a half. Bigelow's averaging 88 points a night, so he is set to set another record and a huge ride tonight. This guy's amazing. He's that close to a world championship. How about Will Loomis? He was just a man-eater in the steer wrestling. Horse change right there, and you let Big Will start winning. He's dangerous. You know, a little late in the week to be a player in a world race, good for him, though. 4.3 was the magic number in the team roping. Two teams getting that. Yeah, Chase Tryon, great move right there on that heel end. Good job keeping things faced in the corner. Great run. Driggers and Nagata, they're, or, yep, they're doing what they need to do, so uh, nice to see them finally pick up a big check. Yeah, we've been waiting for Junior in that little layback right there, haven't we? Yep. Good run. We have. Jake Watson wins another go around. It's Canada night here, on, or it was Canada night last night, and he gets it done at 89 and a half. Yeah, two Canadians, Jake Watson and Stampede Warrior from the Calgary Stampede. That's a great matchup on Canada night. Okay. We had a log jam in the tie-down roping. Three guys in there at 7-5. Cooper Martin was one of those Cowboys. Cooper Martin makes a good run right here. That shows how talented these guys are. He has been a little quiet this week. He took care of it. Tyler Milligan also in there at 7.5. First Wrangler in a far from Milligan. And man, oh man, what a run. 7-5. 
And Riley Pruitt, how aggressive is this guy? This is pure try right here. You can see this wasn't the prettiest run, but he just never quit moving forward through it. Finishes off with a wrap and a half inch. Three guys, what a serpentine. In barrel racing, Haley Kinzel was just dominant last year. She had some issues early this weekend. She has just fought her way back to the top. She sure has in 13.54, the fastest run we've seen all week long. Haley Kinzel, she is really set to win another world title with two rounds left. Yeah, she's won back-to-back -back rounds. Sage Kimsey matched up with Bruiser. You know, this was the marquee matchup, maybe, of this 10 rounds. Yeah, and then when that bull jumped in the air and turned back over there to the right, Sage was so loose, and then just like that, got in control again. That was absolutely amazing. 94 points. He beats Stetson Wright with 93 and a half. Stetson's in that fight for the all-around title. You can see right there, trying to get a little bit of breathing room on Clay Smith. There's a lot of drama here, and I'll tell you, Tough Cooper may be the spoiler. Yeah, yep, that's right. Clay Smith, Tough Cooper, both solid in the average. Stetson Wright, although he's riding bulls good, he can move right up in that average with one more ride. Ram Top Gun, you can see it right there, big low. He's number one in the world, number one in the average. Thing. Same thing for Sage Kimsey. Sage Kimsey can maybe even get to a half million dollars uh, in this whole deal when it's all said and done. Yeah, amazing year. And Boudreau Campbell, boy, tip your hat to him. He is showing up as a bull rider. Been so much fun to watch. Round number nine of the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo coming your way tonight, 10 p.m. Eastern time on CBS Sports Network. Looking for tickets to the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo? StubHub is the official secondary and fan-to-fan -fan site of the rodeo. Fans can buy and sell their tickets through a safe and secure online marketplace. Visit nfrexperience.com. Wherever you listen to the NFR Extra podcast, whether it be on iTunes, Spotify, iHeart, Google Play, or even YouTube, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. And let us know what you think of this episode or any episode by leaving a comment. All right, Mr. Hodges. Here we go Rocking again. Robbie Hodges. That's right. Man, it's been a great week. We got about 24 hours. That, I mean, this is it after that. I'm going to sleep for a week. Ain't that what old snowman said on Smokey yeah. the Bandit? When yeah. I get home, I'm going to sleep for a week. Oh, man, I wanted, like, these conversations and the emotions that have went around. And, um, well, it doesn't stop. Obviously, we're bringing on a guest that I think a lot of people within the industry, they definitely know this gentleman. Yeah. And, um, you know, I've gotten to meet him. He's a great guy. Um, He's the home away from home maker. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we are joined by Randy Bloomer of Bloomer Trailers. Thank you for coming on the show, Randy. Thank you all. Yeah, it's been fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, is this your first time being on a podcast? Yes. Perfect. Right. Well, this won't be your last, I promise. Yep. Uh, there'll Get be a lot of them. Trailers. I would say over the next two years, you're probably going to be on a few. Yeah. All right. Well, so, then train me. Yeah. We will. Yeah. So, you know, obviously you're involved in the business. Mm -hmm. A lot of things you do. One of the things we want to talk about is where did the idea, where did the idea originate for the Bloomer Trailers or where were you and what was going on? And take us to when you launched it. Like what, all the trials and tribulations to get done because it's, Nothing ever comes easy. It wasn't easy. You know, everything is born out of necessity, you know. I mean, that's just the way it is on anything. So mine was no different. I was a trader dealer and for a brand. Horses were changing. Everything was changing. The size of them. They change every decade. If you just look back in history, it's just like every 10 years, the horses they'll get smaller, bigger. We want to put more bone in this. We want to take it out of this. And the rainers were getting bone all of a sudden. Yep. Um, if you weren't current with it, you just kind of got left behind. And the company I was selling for, that's kind of what happened. Mm. I felt like I had a good horse and, um, Tim Roman horse, young horse and went to the Fort Worth stock show there and or the horse show during the summer. It was hot. Yeah. So we were all day long. We're, we're roping and showing. And then they have a, uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana had a USTRC roping back then. So we go straight from there over there. Mm. We're coming back that night. It's like two in the morning, you know, and because they didn't have rotations. I mean, you go out there and you just <laughs> sat and waited, you know. <laughs> if it's five hours, you're going to be there waiting on your turn. If you miss, it's a long day. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, and is this before like iPhones and things like that? Oh, of course. Okay, then that's yeah. forever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old. I mean, you know, to me, it's not that long ago. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I did, and I was coming back, and it was late, early in the morning, and I stopped at a truck stop to get some fuel. Checked the horses, and I checked them, and my good horse said there was blood in the manger right there. Mm. And I'm like, well, what's going on? So we unloaded the horses, and I looked, and the the ride, and the, as high as the manger pan was, it just tore his gums up. Oh, man. You know, and so he was just mm. – so I get back, and Monday morning I call this company, and I say, look, we got to make some changes in this thing. The 
my horse is 14 two hands and these manger pans are way too high he just got exhausted decided i'm gonna give it up mm. puts his just lays his snout right down in the pan and just ground his gums mm. wow so to him it was worth the gum grinding because he was so tired but and it just fell on deaf ears yeah we just did we weren't there was just no r d it was a very gluttonous time because everybody was wanting them then they weren't building enough of them yeah so um from that um had a meeting went to them this is a short version but it, and it's really not it's that good. great it's it is it is so far yeah you got us uh, you got the horse listeners listening, the horse so listening. Yeah, okay yeah, no doubt well i was i was 32 years old you know and i would i would not call myself a businessman i was i was i'd grown this business the sales business nicely and was was very proud of that but i fly up there and i meet with them and i you've got people that's been in the business a long time and you're going to gain knowledge mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and i go in there and we meet for two hours the first 30 minutes they just stroke in tell you how young you are and the face of the company for many years to come and all this <laughs> kind of junk you know and yeah i said well that's great but i need some trailers to sell you know i'm sold three months out yep. let's see if we can come up with a plan you know and, and they were just it was just kind of fell on deaf ears so that lasted for about two hours and i virtually gained nothing right. so i go to the airport true story and i call my wife off a of pay phone thank you because i you know the <laughs> iphone deal it's coming yeah, right yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh that's awesome and so i call her and she said how to go and i said it was terrible i didn't learn anything she mm. said well what are you going to do and out of my mouth and i don't know where it came from i said i'm going to build my own and kick their ass and so that's what i said nice. mm-hmm. and i and i must have meant it at the time and so i thought well now what <laughs> and so you go about <laughs> trying to find people that's smarter than you that because i couldn't build a trailer yeah. you know but i had a vision of what i wanted yep so there's four people that i wanted that i thought well if i can get one of these guys right here then i can start it up mm. and the first two just didn't didn't want to take the risk right um and i I probably wouldn't have either at the time looking at me and saying hey here's what i want to do i'm going to build the best one all this stuff Mm -hmm. but the third one did and so that's kind of how it started right there wow Mm. so i you look i know you're humble and you're thinking that may not be interesting but that's great here's why i think it's interesting you weren't in it for the money Mm. you were spurred by some no pun yeah you were spurred by something that that drove you Right. That's usually how great brands happen. We've been fortunate. And yeah. I, we, my goals, and then they haven't wavered, you know, from that time. They're, they were very clear to me, very concise in what I wanted. Whether I built one or 10,000, it didn't matter to mm-hmm. me at the time. I just knew that I kind of felt like I knew what the horses needed. We need, they need to breathe. They need to get their heads down. They need to be comfortable. So how do we achieve all these things? And there's a lot of, a lot of areas you can look at that no one was willing to do and and that's and i was willing to do it and when you start like that from scratch it, it's a it's a little easier because you're not stopping the train you know or yeah. trying to overhaul the motor while it's running i had the benefit of starting from there and making it sure every component was the best you could find and it's just a different I, people ask me all the time i tell them it's just a different philosophy in manufacturing yeah that's all it is it's I want to be the best, and I have a great team around me that, you know, they buy into that, and we just, that's what we do every day, mm-hmm. so, as I said, trailer trash. <laughs> but, <laughs> you, you didn't, you didn't have, your only agenda was taking care of the horse. Yeah, that's where it all started. Yeah. I, I would love to show the skeleton of one of these trailers at some show and just <laughs> challenge everybody, why don't y'all just do the same thing, let's just, let's just get them together and let the customer decide, but yeah. No one's ever taken me up on that. Oh, that's awesome. See, I'm, I mean, I travel in an RV, which, which because I don't have to have a horse, obviously, right. in, 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 with the barrel. And I see nowadays the quality is just, they're just built to sell. They're just built to sell mm-hmm. instead. And then you're always fixing. A guy told me one time, and he was proud of this. Mm-hmm. There are 29 things wrong with every RV that rolls out of a <laughs> thing. And there's like, <laughs> I'm like, what if that was a, Pardon, but what if that was an airplane or what if that was a, mm-hmm. a race car or anything? 29 things that they have to fix every time. And for us in this industry, I have to get there. I have to get there. These guys have to get there. And that's what is so good about the quality of your stuff. No, oh, I appreciate it. You know, yeah. And when you get, 
when you're out here making a living, you're on the side of the road. You're not at the rodeo. That's right. You know, somebody's lost that's a right. clown. Somebody's lost a run. And that's that's why you don't have to explain, you know, your uh, Jimmy Dean sausage. I'd rather explain the quality. I, I'd rather <laughs> explain the price than apologize for the quality. Hmm. And that was a I good like statement. That. Yeah. yeah, Jimmy Dean sausage. Yeah, I, so Jimmy Dean. This whole time like you're that. talking, I, there's a book. Um, I don't read a lot of books, but I like to read ones about stories. And I read a book, uh, Shoe Dog, Phil Knight, and it talks mm. about how he got going. And you know, the same thing. He wasn't out to make money. He wanted to make a better shoe because he liked running, and the things that they had at the time were inadequate, and that drove him. Mm. And then clearly that worked. Yeah, I don't think anything you know? that you do, there's always something, there's a driving force behind it. Hardly yeah. any of it ap- happens by accident because it's, there's so much that goes into doing it. I don't know anybody that would just, that fell into <laughs> the lap of luxury, you know, <laughs> right. and, and something that's mechanical and, and yeah. man-made. You got a thousand components in there. Your thousand components usually equals Oh my gosh! One of them. Do we dot our eyes and cross our teeth? Exactly. You know? <laughs> so, so tell me about trailer serial number O O O O one. Yeah. How did you know that? All yes. right. It, it, when I started, I never built one or two, zero zero one zero zero two. I always said, "You gotta understand, it's twenty one years ago." Okay. Right. So I said, "When I retire, I'm gonna build myself O one and O two. I got you. You know so. And lo and behold, three and four, since we've been here this week, that was the first two I built, the very first trailer I brought to Las Vegas. We've been here 20-something years now. Mm-hmm. Nice. Whatever. So I, well, that trailer I bought yesterday from the owner. It was a, it was oh, a, nice. Yeah, just it, yesterday. Oh, 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 three? <laughs> and he killed oh, me on the price. Cool. I'd like to call him out right now, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> he got me. Hey. But it, I tell you what. So the trade value was pretty good. Is that what you're saying? For him, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You're like, oh, they hold their man. value, apparently. Yeah. Don't they you're see? smiling and grinning at the see? same time. You're that a victim emo- of your own game right there, aren't you? <laughs> that emotion gets yeah. involved, and you're like, I'm going to own it no matter what. <laughs> you like, what did you just do? <laughs> How much? <laughs> you know, it's it's one of those things, but I have Daryl Singletary's trailer. He's a dear friend of mine. His, oh, his yeah. cargo trailer, and and it's still in Tennessee, and it's got his wrap on it. So mm-hmm. I'm going to bring it back, put it in our little collection. And then three, uh, I know the people that owe, that have the first trailer, the very first trailer, mm-hmm. um, kind people at New Mexico, and, mm-hmm. and they said, it's yours and we die, you know. So it, that's pretty cool too. So it's coming back. And I'm just, and I built my dad the first stock trailer and I got it back. He passed away last year. I got it back. And all these trailers that mean something to me, we're going to put them in a little archive area right oh, there. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Little that front is. window dress stuff. That's pretty cool to well, have. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Well, it would be fun if, if it was a collection of the old Ferraris or something. Yeah. <laughs> these are horse trailers. You know what still, they are? They mean something so to me. They, they really are. If you don't believe, look at this important. thing. Yeah, I mean, I, well, we were talking about the soundproof earlier. Uh, yeah, it works great. Yeah, it, it does. Because in about fifteen minutes here, you're gonna hear them kick it off over there at Flint Stage, and yeah. you'll know exactly why we like this trailer. So, how good, <laughs> yes. And how good you did. So with let's it. talk. Mm-hmm. Well, you you brought it up, NFR. Mm-hmm. What, how long you been coming? And and you, were you with this? Was were you coming prior to yes, Bloomer Trailers? I was. And so where did you stay? And what was your experiences first coming here? I'm going to have to think about where we stayed. Whatever was cheapest, I'm sure, at the <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've been here 25 years. Mm-hmm. And um, at first, I think we stayed at, uh, it seems like Tropicana or somewhere. Nice. No, you know what? It was Harris, who's what's not even here anymore. Yep. But the it was original. Harris. Yeah. Oh, they had great room rates. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they always did. <laughs> you know? So we stayed there and... and had a booth, and I'll tell you an interesting story. When I first started Bloomer, that really got me. When we came out here the first time, I had no idea whether we'd do good or not. Mm-hmm. But I had a lot of, of my cowboy friends that are still on my pro team today, oh, honestly. Nice. And so we came out here, and I thought, man, I, I like to sell a couple, you know. And So I basically had enough aluminum sitting at home to build, like, four trailers. Mm. You know, that was, that was a lot, man. Yeah. Well, come on, that probably cost 20 grand, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, wow. uh, 
we get out here and we didn't even have an order form. I had to make one here and and wow. that's true. Did it all I by hand. I went to the hotel at night, drew it by hand every trailer. And we sold 16 trailers. Nice. Goodness First gracious. year. And so, oh, crap. We got to get back and get to work. I, I, exactly. <laughs> I called my, my shop manager and I was all excited. And he said, uh, Oh, man, what are you talking about? We can't do that. <laughs> oh, gosh. And our, that's where the fun begins. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was great. The reception was good. The, the, it it kind of lends a little validity to what you were thinking about mm -hmm. the horses and and what your concept was. Yeah. Wow. They liked it. Yeah. Is that how you hire, like, the gentlemen that are in gals that get that side of it? Not just building it, but the side of what it means to build a bloomer trailer. As far as the dealerships? The horses. What? Like, just the focus on that. Like, that the people, I, you know, you bring in, and is yeah. that something you look at or no? I you, you The people come in to look at the living quarters. Yeah. I mean, they're they're nice, and they always we always wind up at the horse compartment. <laughs> and then that's where they 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 don't see the stuff we do anywhere else. So nice, it, you know, it kind of drives it home right there that we're serious about what we do. Yeah, you know, right. it's not just you 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 can buy all the sponsorships you want, but when people check you out, the worst thing to me that could happen is you're all touted up here on all the stuff, and then they come see you and they're disappointed. Yeah, to me that's a failure. I think that happens a lot, probably in any business. Absolutely, for that matter, you know. So rodeo, how did you like? Why, why are you in so involved in rodeo? Obviously horses, but that can go in a different, lot of different mm, areas. Right. But why rodeo? Where where does that all come about for you? I've rode forever, you nice. know, my whole life. And then I got in with um, the pro team ropers. Uh, Rich Skelton was, was my first guy. That's honestly. a pretty good guy to be hanging out with. Yeah, yeah we've been friends <laughs> forever. And uh, he was the first guy. As a matter of fact, I met Rich at the World Show. He was showing a horse for somebody. He begins bebopping in the booth, his little strut, you know, and <laughs> we get to talking, and um, he said, I need a trailer. And so I said, well, I'm going to put you on the road with one. Mm. And that was, no one had ever done that. And it was, I was thinking, how stupid is that? <laughs> After he walked <laughs> off. Yeah. <laughs> you got to leave. What about doing? <laughs> and, but there goes that's my $20,000 worth of aluminum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good marketing spend. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It did work. And, it, it, you know, you're trying to get your name out there. That's what yep. you're trying to do. And. And those guys like that lend a lot of credibility to your name. Mm -hmm. and, Absolutely. And, and he was sure fun. He's oh, just yeah. a good guy to be around. And yeah. and then it just kind of went from there. So I wouldn't say my target originally was pure rodeo because I was a horse show guy for mm -hmm. a long time. But I would say that that definitely was a, a goal after I saw the first year of, of what could happen by yeah. having them. And I just kept going from there. And I love the sport. I mean, I just yeah. do. It's I, I, people come in all the time out here and just their first time here. And so we were talking the other night in one of the suites there and they were, they were talking about it. And he said, well, what do you think about all the people here? And I said, the best thing I've heard so far is this is, I've talked to so many people in our booth that this is their first time being here. Yeah. And that's exactly what we want. Yep. Yeah. Oh so, yeah. I mean, this place shows it off, right? Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, it really puts uh rodeo on a, on a, on a platform that I don't think happens anywhere else in the country. You know, and I'm, I want to, you know, I, look, I love Vegas, and I, but, but it really does. I mean, it, it's. It, nobody does a show like this. Yeah. It's just incredible to showcase w what this sport's all about. Yeah. You know, the there's lifestyle. The legends, the lifestyle, it's just the history of it. You know, there's a, if everybody would just understand that it's not just rodeo cowboys. I mean, it's, it's just a way of life. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they chose it, and they're good at it, and it's credible. Yeah. And Damn so sure ain't no business model plan at Georgetown, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> you better love it. <laughs> uh, they couldn't figure this one out. <laughs> yeah, you know, they'll oh, yeah. you know, see the old professor up there now. We're going to, this year, we're going to learn about rodeo as a great <laughs> business model plan. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. No. But, you know, also, too, though, when you try to define it, you take away from the meaning of it. Oh, and yes. rodeo is a very open definition of what it is. And sometimes you can interpret it how you need to. Mm -hmm. um, but it's definitely a way of life. That's for sure. It's like a cuss word. You can use it as a vowel. You can use it as, you know, yeah. what we're talking about. So, <laughs> all right. So, obviously, you're in rodeo. Mm -hmm. There's something else you're attached to. You're, you're attached to a guy by the name of Sage Kimsey. <laughs> I am, yeah. And um, as we know, and I know Sage really well, and great guy, but you're, you're attached to something special there. And I'm not talking the Alexis Bloomer Sage Kimsey. I'm talking about just what you, being a rodeo fan and, and being a part of Sage is kind of this... I don't know, man. He's on some crazy mission. 
How is it being a part of that? I would like to tell Sage it's exhausting, but it's not. <laughs> He's just too low key. Yeah, he, true. He, uh, I was really proud of him this year. He came home from the road and he, he, he'd done well. And he came home and most guys are wanting to go sit around and recoup and heal up and yeah. all this stuff, which he did. But he, his number one goal when he got home was to buy a skid steer so he could cl start clearing his land. <laughs> so right. two yeah. weeks he's home and he's got a skid steer you know and he's out there just <laughs> cutting stuff that's awesome uh, so it, so that part is fun he when i first met sage um he was on my high school rodeo team oh wow mm -hmm. years ago and um uh spelling fast. spelling bee champion uh sage kimsey <laughs> yes <laughs> seriously oh uh, he's, he's he's not dumb <laughs> no, 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 he's no. <laughs> When I met him, um, I, I was on a hunting trip, and I came back, and he was at my house. Mm. And it turns out that he'd been seeing my daughter for a while, and no one told me because they knew it. <laughs> oh, I probably boy. wouldn't react very good, and I was pissed. I'm not going to lie, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, um, what are you doing with a stinking, rotten old bull rider? <laughs> That's right. I've got a gun. Is that what you said? I've uh, just come home from a hunting trip. I thought I'd been doing it right. <laughs> oh, yes. bull rider? I'm a time, <laughs> event, time event guy my whole life. <laughs> no, every time I've been guy in America, and yeah, come on with the bull rack. Yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> where did I fail? No, it was, it was, yeah, it was, I was, I was, I'm not gonna lie, absolutely, was, I was pissed and I felt like I was hiding it from me, and they it were, it turns out, <laughs> you yeah. Know? But he, he was, he's just kind of in a place where we, I'll tell you his story, and he'll hate this story, and so that's what I'm gonna tell Good. you. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so they finally got me to go to lunch with him one day. And so we're sitting there, and I remember he said something like, something about people. I said something about people, and he said, you know, I, I really don't even care what people think about me. I said, you're a liar. I said, that's not true. In the business you're in, you better care what people think about you. Mm. If you're going to do all the things you said you're going to do, you need to start liking people a little bit. Mm, good point. Mm -hmm. And he you know, he was he just kind of had a little chip on his shoulder, maybe nervous, I don't know, but whatever it was, because he's a real kind guy. Yep. He really is. And he's he tries to be articulate with his words because he don't he didn't want to be misconstrued. And he and over the past four years now, four and a half, you know, he lives there in Salado now and has for a long time. And we just we golf together and whatever it is, you know, we we're, we're will do it he lives less than tenth of a mile from me yeah. <laughs> he's right there and is he a good golfer he has yet to beat me <laughs> nice. so I got you. Oh, emphasize that that'll be the end all <laughs> <laughs> i love it uh, no he'll take that as a challenge and kick kick my butt <laughs> is what he'll do <laughs> no he's he's good he's he's actually a good golfer yeah and um but he's a he's got a real kind spirit too and yeah but when it's go time I've never seen anybody rise to the occasion like him. You know, last night was a perfect example. Oh, it yeah. was just man, it's phenomenal. That's that's what he is about right there. Oh yeah. So he'll he'll if a bull, you know, even if it doesn't mean much, he'll try to stay on. But you you take something like that matchup last night, and he's ready. Yeah, he wasn't coming he, off. No, no. <laughs> I know that it, was fun last night. It, yeah, it, it's been night. a yes and there's uh, been just a real quick, everyone. We're talking about and if you're listening to this like I don't know in 2020. We're yeah. talking about round eight of the 2019 Wrangler NFR, and bull riding was bananas. Yes, it was crazy last night. And but... the guy we're talking about ended up being the King Kong of that bananas last night. Yeah, yeah. Sage, you know, I, I, I remember when Sage first started here a few years ago, and, and I, I, we were at Lawton, and uh, he rode one there, and I said right there, this is this is something special. It's something different. He had one 90. He jumped high as I've ever seen. Of course, and then you know, I'm a I'm a fan of of Ted because I'm a barrel man, you know, and 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 that's why, and he, and he always uh, because he was he was the old barrel man guy, you know, and I, and that's why I've always and you know Ted's kind of harsh and he's always I never did like you very much, but you always take care of my kids, you know, in the barrel, mm -hmm. and and that's why I'm such a Sage fan of of, of his because he's just because I because of that reason mainly but now it's just it's grown into a good relationship mm -hmm. i don't know anybody with a bad relationship with him you know i don't either i yeah. really don't and he's finally I, one thing that i always tell our youth pro team you know we've done that for about 12 years and we had nine of them last night at at, at the perf 
mm. performing wow. um, for, for our youth team. And uh, we choose kids not – and it's not about the event they do because right. they know how to do that and they're very good at it. Yep. You know, it's just about some life lessons that when you don't have any much guidance coming up and you learn them on your own and now you're older, yep. I feel like it's a responsibility of you to, to try to put some things back in there that – really need to be in place procedures you know more your ethics your work ethics and this kind yeah. of stuff because they seem to be in short supply these days but finally i i think i got sage convinced at one time mm. you don't have to have that chip on your shoulder yeah people the, the bravest and toughest people i know are some special forces friends of mine mm. and i mean they're the kindest people yeah. you'll ever meet in your life so kindness is not weakness no oh. you don't have to be really badass i mean you just yep. got to be yeah. You got to be can have your convictions and how you feel and what you believe and what you do and stand firm on them and know I won't cross that barrier right there. Yeah, you know I do this this, but I'm never going there. Whatever it is, you know, yep. everybody's different, and so that's kind of that's what he figured out, and he's just a pleasure now. Yeah, he is. I mean, I look. He's I've got to spend a lot of time with him at times. I mean, hell, this past summer when we hung out with Alexis, we did a video shoot, photo shoot. All day. I think we were 14 hours that day. It was the best was time we too, did. Oh, way. God. That good was, job. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I mean, we did the whole city. No. Yeah. Oh, with yeah. all their hotel partners, and we ended at uh, Bellagio with the fountains. And, you know, uh, just I'll add to that. You know, so me not being the rodeo guy, we get to hang out with a lot of these guys when we do these media shoots, and we just we do a lot of stuff together with the contestants. And my son, who is now 14, he has been a part of these. I always bring him along. I like bringing my kids to work. You know, like... Mm-hmm. If they're going to watch me, they're going to watch me, you know, like just and, and what we do. Mm. Anyway, over the years, my son's gotten me Sage because we, you know, well, Sage has won five in a row. And so we always take the champions and it just makes sense. Anyway, to this day, when I come home at night, my son always asks, because he could check on his own, but, he, you know, he does his own thing. He's soccer. He always asks, hey, how did Sage do, Dad? He's like, mm. he did well. I was like, you want to check out the highlights from tonight, T? He kick kick butt. So I just, it, it, Sage really rubbed off on a kid who doesn't even follow rodeo and has no idea about it. His dad works in it, you know, but yeah, I mean, like he's made an impact on my son and that to me is important to me. Mine too. Yeah. Yeah. When we were at Greeley a few years ago, uh, my son was with me and he just took him and he was not even old enough to, you know, go out or do anything. So they sat in there (laughs) and played video games in the trailer (laughs) and just spent time with him. That's something you, I don't care how many championships, I don't care if he wins 32 of them. That was important to me. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I do too. Yeah. You're very lucky. Thank you. Thank you. You're very lucky. Yeah. See, it could have been a rope or there well, you'd have been. <laughs> so that goes in this next piece, Randy. <laughs> we don't need to dive too much into this, but you were in a plane crash. And it, as I'm listening here, a very fortunate guy, just about you being you. Did that, what did that do as far as your, your faith, the kind of where you're at today? Did it? Did that change you that? Because that, I mean, that impacted all of us. When that happened, I remember all of us just kind of just thinking about, man, this, no, look, no, like, yeah, and you don't, I don't want bad things happen to bad people, but man, I definitely don't want bad things happen to good people. I right? appreciate right. saying yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I never have really talked about it much because I'm not real good at talking about myself <laughs> on yeah. it, but, uh, and before I to even tell you all the, all the other stuff, the injuries and all that stuff. I just tell you that the hardest part of all of it is the impact it has on your family mm. because they're the ones that see the aftermath for months, two years, Yeah, you know, and, um, it's a burden. You're all of a sudden you're the caretaker of the group. And now you're the burden of the group. Mm. And Sage was a big part of that right there. He was yeah. loyal every day because nice. they, they, they had things to do. And so he'd stay there. And I mean, it's, you know, he's, he put all his ego aside. I mean, it's wow. when you can't walk, when you can't walk, you can't get up yep. and you go 20 feet and get you a glass of water or whatever it is. I mean, that's, that's yeah. generous to me and, and I never forgot it, but yeah, I was on a hunt and, um, West Texas and we hunted and we were through. And so I, I flew private out there and, um, I was getting my pilot's license at the time. Mm-hmm. And so my, one of my instructors flew us out there. He's a little twin Comanche, and mm. I, I didn't have any experience in a twin. So, I mean, I wasn't trying to learn anything. I was going hunting, you know. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. right. After it was over, um, called him. He come and picked us up. And um, I, I don't think it had anything to do with the altitude. And it was hot. I think mm. it was kind of hard to start then, you know. And But it fired up, and, and it was all fine. We were, we were coming in final, and um, 
dropping the guy off in Mineral Wells, Texas, and then we were going straight to Temple, mm -hmm. the airport I flew out of, and um, engine started fluttering on the right side, and it just next thing you know, it's out. Whoa. And so we start sinking, you know, and they always tell you, oh, the things you can, I like a twin because it can fly on one engine. I can tell you what, this thing dropped like a rock. <laughs> I don't care what oh, they man. say, it just did. And, um, and so he's going through the motions trying to figure out what the heck's going on and get it started again, and it was to no avail. So You were on final? When it, I, we were, I would say we were seven miles out at this time. Okay. And, you know, airport in sight, cancel flight following. You're, you know, you see your destination, sure. so you feel pretty confident about it. And so we, as we got closer, we knew we, there was a real good chance at that point that we weren't going to make the runway. Mm. So you – and then the left engine started fluttering. We were about three miles at this point, and then it's just it becomes imminent at that point that yeah. a good, bad, or ugly, you're not going to land at that airport, <laughs> you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And they cleared the runways for us just in case and had emergency st staff mm -hmm. over there and stuff. But um, there was a field on the other side of the highway. There was big power lines to the right, trees to the left, and mm. trees in front. So there was a small window. You know, trees are dead small plane yeah. you get a star yeah um highline wires aren't any better so there really and there wasn't many options we just had to get it on the ground wow and so um that was the decision and so i turned around to my friend i said you need to get down we're gonna crash and he ducked down behind the seat kind of in a fetal position mm -hmm. and never got a scratch when we crashed but um we we um kept trying to find a good place to you know to do it this is all within a minute or 30 oh, yeah. seconds. We're I mean, seconds. Yeah, we're not, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we're not talking about like a, in a jet <laughs> no. here. We're on final at no, seven. You, you know, you ain't got time to Google anything. <laughs> 2,200 no, feet, that. I guess, weren't you? So, so. Yeah, right in there, yeah. about 17. And, and yeah. so you're, 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 you're just, you're realistically failing at 300 feet a minute, you know, and mm. or faster, maybe right. 500 at this point. Um, and of all things, my pilot just lost it. Mm. Six thousand hour pilot, you know, and um, he panicked. Oh, man. And they, they, the, the first thing they teach you in, when you're learning to fly is that your procedures and everything in an airplane has a procedure and a redundancy procedure. You know what I mean? So, yeah. first thing you do is pull out the book, and every airplane gives you your, your every scenario you can imagine. And yeah. So I'm looking for the book. And get the book, and he's just like zoned out, flipping switches, just. Still silly stuff. I've never seen a grown man lose it. Yeah. And so we're, you don't want to nose down, you know, and so yeah. we're trading off every bit of altitude we have for airspeed to keep mm -hmm. it above stall. Mm. And it was looking worse and worse, you know. And so I remember I ne it never knocked me out. I got a terrible concussion, you know, cut you up everywhere and stuff. But I remember I would have loved to have been knocked out. And looking yeah. back, you know, yeah, that would have been yeah. a blessing. But um, so anyway, he, he that's what he did. He he panicked. Mm. And what does he do? He, he, he won't acknowledge me, won't acknowledge anything. He's just pa just panicked. Never, oh, he man. just lost his, lost it. So I reached over and I grabbed his arm and I said something that's probably not very nice. You know, I'm not going to repeat it, but yeah. uh, I get this thing on the ground. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And the worst thing you can do is turn. So what does he do? He just turns the yoke to the right. Oh man! And so that turned it directly downward. Yep. And so I just smashed the right rudder at that point, and it bended. It bent just enough to kind of do this. Uh, we were. He was actually doing this, and and I needed to get the nose around is what I was trying to do. Right. And, uh, and so, but it's too late at that point. And I remember seeing it coming up. It, it hit right on right off to my right leg is where where we hit the ground, and we were at an angle. And it was, I remember thinking, honestly, all I thought about was, you know, everybody says, oh, your life flashed before your eyes. You start thinking of your prey. And, uh, I didn't do any of that. I didn't ever, it never crossed my mind I was going to die. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. It would make a great story, but it's just not sure. the truth. Like, I'm know? not dying. No, I just thought, <laughs> I knew one thing for sure, and it was, this is going to hurt. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know that. <laughs> and so that's what happened. We came down, and, and I remember the impact knocked a radio out of the dash and hit me in the chest, cracked my sternum. Oh. Yoke hit me in the chin and laid it open and Man. smacked my head around. And and then it 
the first thing when it stopped it finally stopped you know and i was still awake and i'm thinking man this this is okay but it was smoky i said get out we got to get out it's going to burn oh, man and so the door not my door open and so uh in the back my friend got up mm -hmm. and he and i so i looked down and i got two bones sticking out of my oh, leg man. and i said look i i'm i broke my leg i cannot get out so he it busted my seat too and so he crawled over me and pull me out and I looked over at Craig my pilot and um he was Craig hit the dash so hard that the the uh, cruise you're basically a cruise yeah mm -hmm. like in your altitude yeah, cruise yeah. he uh, it stuck him right in the forehead and uh. And we found the spring in there about when they were doing surgery that night. Oh, <laughs> really? so, oh, oh. oh the altimeter, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Off the dollar. Yeah, yeah I know. that's yeah. right. I fly with Donnie. So okay, so yeah. that's oh, what it is. Man. Yeah. Donnie can tell you exactly. Yeah. He's a great pilot. Yeah. But, yeah, and so that's it. Um, you don't really know everything that's happened to you at that point. You're just, so this friend of mine looks over and he's just crying, man, because I think, God, it's that bad, you know, because yeah, I didn't yeah. even want to. There's, there's a lot of blood involved, but, yeah. you know, and I told him, I said, man, we're alive. It's exactly. that's the main thing. Yeah. And um yep. and my leg hurts. Let's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please let me go unconscious here. Okay. Yeah. Get me out and then knock me yeah. out. Yeah. I, I told him, I said, You gotta get Craig out, man. You know, and and so he goes over and he's a big stout kid and mm -hmm. he reaches over and grabs him, pulls him out, and it it, it just laid him open pretty good and broke oh. both his, or broke both bones in one leg. And oh man. So anyway, he, he got us out and I was laying back on the back there on the back aileron and and i and then the reality started hitting and people started stopping there was a highway in between the airport and where we were at mm. <clears throat> so people started stopping and the next thing I, I knew it was pretty bad when a lady real kind older lady comes up and she's going to console me a little bit you know and she comes up and she's so sweet and and she looks down my legs and oh my god <laughs> like, oh, yeah. And <laughs> there goes that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't want any attention to anything right now. No. Mm. So anyway, she, I, I, it, it was from that point on right there to the time the helicopter got there, it was kind of a blur a little yeah. bit. But how it, how long I mean, was that? I mean, how, it took them you, less than fifteen minutes wow. to get there. Your adrenaline and, was pumping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was pumping. They, um. You're out there. You, I've never been in a position to where you just you can't move really. Oh, you're, man. you're, yeah. I had no idea. You know, you just you think, wow, this. One of, yeah, there's a lot of things going through your mind, but yeah. none of them are really. You're really not, not really lucid. I mean, to the point of talking about it, you don't really know how bad yeah, you yeah. are, and I wasn't that smart to start with. So I'm thinking, God, I hope this didn't hurt me. No, well, I didn't, I didn't no, think that. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's a lot of that you stuff goes through your mind, you know. Sure it does. Absolutely. So they got me on the helicopter, and that was good. They started an IV and got some pain meds in me, and mm. they set that cast out there, air cast, to get me on the, to get me in there, and Ooh. it was unbelievable. So this, this friend is with me. He's he's a wreck, you yeah. know. And but it, he's, he's okay, right? Like he's, he's fine, and I think he felt more guilt about that than anything. And he's a real <sighs> kind kind yeah. guy. And, yeah, but it, it couldn't make him understand. Hey, man, it's it's the way it is. Yeah. You know, this, this is it. It's real. Yeah, and it seems surreal. Is what it did. Mm. I've heard that term a lot, and I never understood what it meant till then. But I do now. Yeah, and it does. It's like you're really gonna. It's really gonna happen. You know. And yeah. It's really weird, weird thoughts. But yeah, they get to the hospital, and it, my family was four hours away. You mm. know, from there, and rushing in and. Uh, by this time, I had delauded in me, and mm. I didn't care. Life exactly. was good. <laughs> <laughs> I had that with a kidney stone once. Four I hate hours. to say I had, yeah, yeah, but why are we delauded. still in here? Yeah, you know? <laughs> I'm good. Hey, I've this, been there. Yeah. This guy, he come down and he lift up that rag and and that bone sticking out there. This one here, and I'm like, hmm. Now it's time yeah. to go back to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> the reality. So what it did was it 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 basically just tore my ankle bone off my ankle it oh, man. wound up four surgeries killed all the cartilage so it, they fused it mm. and two years later yeah. so that, that's where i'm at today the concussions were i've heard of dreams from some of my special forces guys you know and stuff mm -hmm. and they tell you about these reoccurring dreams and stuff and mm. i don't know if it's the medicine or what it is but they're they're horrible the most horrible yeah. things you could ever imagine and they're you know, you you're you're soaking wet. Oh man! And just it's weird, just really weird. And so, yeah. 
I, I tell you the funny part of that though. I try to put a little humor in all of it because it's not just I'm all glad doom you're here and to laugh about it. No, yeah, yeah, yeah seriously. Here. Yeah. yeah. But my my son, he was home one day from college. He was in college, and he he would come home right after school on Fridays, just to, uh, from Huntsville and drive over there. You yeah. know, so we're sitting there, and and this is about six weeks into it, you know, and and I had to have a couple more surgeries and stuff like this. So um, he's sitting there, and and he said. How you feeling, Dad? I said, and I really felt well. I said, you know, I'm, I feel stronger every day. I really do. And, and about that time, I got the shakes, mm. the uncontrollable shakes, all uh. are freezing to death immediately. You hit, you shake. You, do you know what I'm talking about? It's crazy, and you're just, what the heck is going yeah. on? Here? And of course, my son is like, <laughs> why that? Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, <laughs> what do you do? I said, put blankets <laughs> on me, you know, and that's yeah. what he did. And then a couple minutes later, you're just sweating to death, you know. Oh man! And so, of course, my wife he tells her, and she's automatically, Freaking man, out. oh yeah. And yeah, I wow. said, she said, what, what's going on? And she said, did you take your medicine? I said, no. And she said, well, I said I quit taking them two days ago. And she said, why? And I said, because I'm tired of taking them. Uh, this is, I'm going to take the pain for a while, but these things make me feel terrible. And they just did. And so I did. And so that was the residuals from that. Whoa. And so it lasted for two days. And so you were uh, like in Ray, in off. the movie Ray, yeah. when he was going through the withdrawals, I guess <laughs> yeah, it was, wasn't much. it? Yeah. Golly. Yeah, it really was. That stuff's Damn. tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's some strong medicine. And, and it did. It hurt every day. And it, uh, but pain's it's just what it is, you know. Yep. So I tell everybody to be tough all the time. And I was kind of trying to follow my own advice you better suck it up you know enough yeah. of this people waiting on you and i just got tired of being a victim you know yeah so but little did i know it would be three months later before i would not have to be the victim again yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so oh my goodness I, so anyway here i am today how did okay well, so are you flying <laughs> you any you now don't talk or are you or done yeah, or man. yeah what's the what's the i flew commercial i fly commercial a lot i have to and then this year my sheep hunts in yukon and bc uh, float planes, bush planes, right. doesn't bother me. I mean, I just, I'm just not gonna let it dictate how I think. Yeah. It wasn't the plane's fault. No, he turned both tanks to an empty tank. Mm. So oh. he ran it smooth out of fuel, and they don't fly very good like it's that. What kill scanner? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah same thing. Uh, I would have preferred a glider at that point. <laughs> yes, a little, little more wingspan. Yeah. I'm trying to get my license. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Donnie's helping. I want to. My goal in life is to be a crop duster with Evan Allard. So <laughs> that's that's my next goal. He said, "There's one sitting there. There's an air tractor sitting in Oklahoma waiting on it." Oh so you could do the podcast in the plane. Yes, I will. And I said, "Only if I can dress like the Red Baron." You know, I got to do the whole part. I'm gonna, Can't I'm gonna wait be the, to see his plane. Oh. You bet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> before. Well, let's end on this piece. You talked a lot about family through that. Mm -hmm. How important is your family to you, your business, and all that you do? I mean, it seems like it's pretty important from what I see from the eye test. Well, I can tell you this, I don't, I would take, if, if my kids, if they had to go what I went through and I had a chance to trade it off, I would trade in a second, everything. Mm. If uh, our family's small, um, I would say that bringing wasn't that great. So I didn't want that, you know, yeah. <laughs> how smart right. am I if I do the yeah. same thing, right? Yeah. So, um, but we were very close and it's always been us four. So, yeah, I would say that if I had to categorize it, it would be a, a one plus. That's the number one thing. Yeah, I'd give it up today, all of it. You know, anybody, parent, any parent would, right? Sure. Yeah, I, I know mean, exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, if you yeah. if you could take away the pain or or take away any of the burdens that they have, and and all it took was for you to give your left arm or something like that, and yep. we we everyone sitting in here would say, no, let's do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah. So that's that's how that's how serious it is to me that's why sage has to watch out he uh, needs to mind his step you better believe it. <laughs> yes uh, he'll love you heard he it yeah, yeah I know. you're well, very lucky with him he, he is yeah. yeah well i randy this is amazing man and i you're a busy guy because i know you got trailers to sell so yeah. uh thank you for coming i mean look you said you weren't going to talk or you don't talk or this has been a really good interview said it wasn't yes, good at you. it yeah, no, these podcasts yeah. aren't bad. You just sit and talk. No, I mean, it's not like it's that camera that gets you. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Yes. No, 
Well, you're easy to talk to, both of you. Well, thank yeah. you, you know, very much. I'll listen to all your podcasts this, last, this week while I was out Have you? Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Sure yeah, it's, uh, y'all hear that, folks? Randy Bloomer listens to our podcast. Yes. So you should, too. Our award-winning podcast. Award-winning. Well, that's right. <laughs> well, I'm trying to learn something. Yeah. yeah. It, so anyway. are we, buddy. But, I mean, we really did. And I, I, I think from what I assumed you were or who you were, now I definitely know. I mean, then yeah. just sitting in this podcast is exactly what I thought you were. And uh, yeah, that's very you're kind, a big guy, gentlemen. Man. Yeah, thank absolutely. you very much. You well, thank you for that. coming on the thank show. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Enjoyed it very much. Yeah, yeah, thank you. The next generation of rodeo stars will compete in Las Vegas at the Junior World Finals, presented by Yeti, December fifth through fourteenth at Cowboy Christmas inside the Las Vegas Convention Center. More than eight hundred fifty youth contestants will compete for titles in nine events: bull riding, team roping, tie down roping, steer wrestling, barrel racing, breakaway. Pole bending, mini saddle bronc riding, and mini bareback riding. Competitions start at 9 a.m. daily inside the Wrangler Rodeo Arena. Visit nfrexperience.com for details. To celebrate the 35th anniversary of the National Finals Rodeo in Las Vegas, LVE and PRCA present the top 35 most memorable moments. Saddle bronc riding legend Clint Johnson won his first world championship in 1980. But it was after the NFR moved to Las Vegas in 1985 that Johnson became a dominant force. Johnson's gold buckle in 1987 came on the heels of a reserve world title in 1986. He'd led the pack riding into the finals that year, but lost out to bronc riding buddy Bud Monroe. He must have felt like he let one get away. Johnson was the number one bronc rider heading into the 1987 NFR as well, and he did not let up until he had secured his second world championship. It started a streak of three straight world titles. In his career, Johnson rode Bronx at a dozen consecutive NFRs from 1978 through 1989, and he won the NFR Saddle Bronc Riding Average Championship in his final appearance in Las Vegas. The South Dakota native was also a sports standout in football and wrestling in high school. The four-time world champion was inducted into the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame in 1992. joined by saddle bronc world champ clint johnson clint welcome to the show hey thanks a lot glad yeah. to be here thank you for coming on uh clearly you've won quite a few things here in vegas and um obviously you're not today you're just coming here and enjoying it as the many champs that we've sat and talked to about the nfr retired life let's go back to uh when you first came to vegas what was it like coming from wherever you were before and coming here to rodeo what was it like coming to Vegas, City of Lights, Thomas Mack Center? Yeah, from, all... from the myriad in that area. Yeah. Well, I went to the finals the first year. It was at the fairgrounds in Oklahoma City. Yep. No feeling like it. Yeah. Great, great venue, great crowd, great everything. What year was that? 78. Nice. Okay. So I felt could, lucky to actually start there and go to the myriad. Yep. It was a good facility, bigger. Uh Bigger, better, more money. Yep. And uh, in 85, it moved here. Gosh, probably the best move rodeo could have made at that time. You know, looking at it at the time, everybody's a little worried about it. And had right to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Oklahoma City was underwriting a project that was making money. They weren't really putting money in it. Right. Uh, gotcha. Which, uh, you know, bless their hearts for that. It failed and didn't do well in Dallas, didn't do well in L.A., and it it found a home in Oklahoma City, and they nurtured it and brought it along, and uh, needed to go to a bigger media site. Yeah, bigger venue, more money. Mm-hmm. Uh, Las Vegas provided all those things. Yeah, where did um, your first year out here? Where did you stay? Because you know we like to ask that just because of the old traditional. And a lot of those places aren't around anymore. I know. That Tropicana's still open. That's ah, I nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, that was yeah. Tropicana was hopping back. I mean, that was like cool place. Yeah, yeah. it was the spot mm-hmm. for sure. You bet. It was good. So when you came here and rode, what was it like? You know, we talked about the Thomas Mack Center. You were just talking about Oklahoma City. How was it the difference in what you'd rodeo before? Because what we've heard here is that intimate sight, that just kind of the tightness of the arena. I mean, did that that get you good? I mean, you're already going to go in your, you know, your rodeo and then you're, you're at the NFR, but did the Thomas Mack Center make it just another level up for the rodeo business? Yeah, I mean, you have a captive audience, and it's, like I say, it's pretty tight. Yeah. But uh, there's probably no place like it. I mean, the electricity is big in there. Did uh, did it 
like when you were out there, I mean, because we've seen this evolution of NFR at the Thomas and Mack Center. And if you go back to then and today, how do you like what's happened with that place? With what you did you go? Have you you've been this week, right? Obviously, I would imagine. Wouldn't miss it. Okay, so when you <laughs> go now and you see what it was back then, how do you like with what it's been and where it is today? I mean, how, would you like to be riding in the Thomas Mack Center today? With what you see. That's a ridiculous question. Hell yeah, I'd like to be You better there. believe yeah, it. Yeah, Especially but I mean, when there's but no, yeah, the f- five in the average right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, actually, the facility, and they've changed the configuration a little yes. bit. Well, hell, it's better. They've got a little, really, I mean, they've got, there's things about it that you would change, yep. obviously. Uh, even from a bronc rider standpoint. Mm-hmm. The front chutes on both sides, been in both of them. Yep. Not a fan. Are those two front shoes? Hmm. Really, no room over there, is there? Why? Why Again, not? Why not? I have. I can't really tell you why, but horses run down the gate there every damn night. If gotcha. you watch, and I can't really tell you exactly why. Mm-hmm. Shoots like every shoot everywhere else. Yep. But horses go down the gate, especially. I mean, I sit right in behind shoot seven. Oh, okay. You know, kid. so I see it. Some nice tickets. And yeah. I thought, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> They're not mine, but my, my mother-in-law takes good yeah, care yeah, of me. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I would I would probably try to change that, but I don't know that they can with the facility they have. And it's it works yeah. great, but it would be better. Yeah. I, but, uh, gosh, from a cowboy standpoint, gosh, we've re- – you ever been to Little Rock, Arkansas? Telling you what, <laughs> this is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gotcha. Yeah, absolutely. So, what well, back you know back in the seventies and the late seventies and eighties, you know, you were a bronc riding hero to all these guys. Do they ever? I mean, do you get to go visit with some of the guys like the Wright Boys or Sundell and some of those guys that, you know, because they, you know, even though you've been out of the scene for what fifteen years now or so, Let's try thirty. Well, yeah. I was just trying to be nice. <laughs> that um. You know, I'm sure those guys, they still look up to you just like any other sport or anything else, you know, the heroes. And I feel fortunate enough to get to know a few of those guys, <clears throat> and, and they're all real respectful of me. I, I don't appreciate that. You know, even <clears throat> even today, I've gotten to know a few of them. And then my daughter barrel races, so now I get out oh, a little oh, more. That's and uh, That's fun. But, no, that's a great bunch of guys. Every, they just pass the torch along, and, hell, they're – Things are a little different, but hell, it ain't a lot different. Right. What yeah. What about the saddles and stuff like that? It, I know you really can't do much with a saddle, but, you know, the bareback right, and you've seen the riggings evolve from <coughs> the old, uh, you know, Jim Houston's to now with the riding of these bar stoves and these meat, what do they call them, beast masters and all these big high-handle riggings. What What do you think the difference is now? I, I And, of course, you're going to – I don't want to sound like an old – you ain't. Uh, you're not. I mean, the quality's not in the equipment in the bronc riding that was there. Mm. Um, Bill and Duff Sphere mm-hmm. and their boys, Randy and Robin and Casey and the whole gang, they they built the best saddle that probably ever was on a bronc. And they probably pushed the limitations of the rules as far as you could. Right. Uh I mean, I got a saddle that I bought in 1975, and uh, it's been in every possible configuration you can find, and never, <laughs> never cracked or broke or really? missed a beat. And I know of 50 guys that had one just like it, mm-hmm. and you couldn't break one of them damn saddles. They really? weren't going to break. These well, guys today testament. pack two around. Yeah, just in case. You know, and and. Uh, the design was similar today to today's saddles, but mm-hmm. I think possibly the things they've changed actually limits them a little bit. Really? Hmm. Uh, Describe just just from a guy watching. Yeah. And not taking anything away from those guys, I don't think I could do any. I couldn't do as well as they're doing in the equipment they got. Mm. I'd I would, uh, you know, I'd like to match some of the guys I know with them. Right. Today, I think they do really well. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, uh, you know, I mean, that's just watching. Hell, I don't know. I wouldn't ride the damn things you're riding. Really? That's, that's <laughs> interesting. No, that's great. I love that. No, you that's know, what we're looking and, you for. You know, and I'm not talking. And it isn't the guys making them's fault. Hell, they're, they're mm-hmm. making what they think they want, and yeah, that's yeah. what they think they want. But, you, you, to me, you probably learn more about bronc riding after you quit. 
Oh, I see. A little bit. I mean, yeah. you watch, you pay sure. attention, you see, and you look at what they're riding and what they're doing, and you're like, man, I think, I think that's helping that guy out a lot. I think we need to, uh, huh. you know, if I could let one of those guys ride a good old severe saddle, it was <laughs> was good, you know, I'm sure it wasn't messed up or something. Right. I think they would like it. Mm. They, they, but you can't. There's just none out there now. Right. That's that's what I was always. You know, it's so funny in the bareback riding. You go through three or four riggings a year. You know, but a bronc saddle. We were in here with Brad yeah, the other that's day, and, and there was. You know, if you go back to that podcast, you'll hear him say, "Oh, I had the same saddle forever." And you know, yeah. And, yeah. Well, I actually bought that saddle in '75, and uh, I consider myself lucky. I never even had to borrow a saddle, ever. Wow. Airlines would lose it, but I'd get it in time to ride. I loaned it to a couple of guys to ride. <laughs> really? But uh, you know, I think that was part of my reason I had consistent success. I didn't have to change a dang saddle yeah. every couple of years. Or some of these guys, gosh, they they change saddles all the time. Mm. Yeah, I mean that's got to change your like your. You got to have what makes you feel good when you're doing what you do to perform as the best. And if you're constantly changing that up, how do you find consi- – I'm mean, not for you, but I mean, I'm saying for the athlete, how do they find consistency? You know, it's a mind game anyway yeah. at a certain point. I mean, some of the best bronc riders you ever saw, the most talented individuals, aren't always guys win the most. Yeah. I don't know why is that. Heck, I, it's kind of hard to explain that. Yeah. It is. But it uh, has to be mental. Absolutely. I mean, you need that thing. That thing up there is. You want to be confident in your. Yeah. 100%. Really confident. Yeah. And you got to be able to just turn it all loose. Right. So, Clint, one of the things we've been doing with all the, uh, a lot of you gold buckle winners and world champs is going back and kind of talking about today's game. Game, You know, there's a lot of as equipment around to make you better to learn. And meaning like, uh, you know, they're filming themselves and they're seeing what they're doing right and wrong. Were there things that you did back then for, let's just call it practice purposes or some sort of techniques that you focused on or kind of kept changing up? Or I mean, how did you go about to your craft back then? Well, I probably, looking back on it, I feel like I probably uh, started learning to ride when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Watch guys ride. Mm-hmm. Uh, had a really clear mental picture about what a bronc ride was before I even – got on oh that's cool i see when i was growing up probably. yeah really and i and i'm only i'm saying this because i thought about it now i didn't know it as i was rodeoing but mental practice i think made me what i was visualization yeah i knew what i wanted knew what i wanted to do i was hard-headed as hell mm-hmm. uh and got some really good advice mm-hmm. maybe accidentally right you know, I had a rodeo club advisor. He wrote a few Bronx. Didn't didn't claim to know a lot about it. Yeah. But uh, he told me he needs to put them horses in the neck. Oh. <laughs> okay. Run on Bill Smith. Went to his school. He'd lift on rain. Mm. Great, man. That'll help because I've been yeah getting my ass kicked here. But uh, just a few things along the way. But main thing is you keep a strong mental picture of what it's supposed to look like. Yeah. And know what you're supposed to do before you get in there. And I don't know that – and I think that with kids today, I don't know that they get the exposure we had to it. Yeah. Really? You know, we were ranch kids. We went to three rodeo. Went to St. Ange. Mm-hmm. Went to Bellfish. Went to Deadwood. <laughs> and during those three places, you see some of the best stock. Oh, my gosh. And yeah. some of the best cowboys there ever was. You know, nice. Deadwood – and Belfouche were just huge at oh, that sure. time. Yeah. They, you know, they're good rodeo still, but yeah. uh, at that time, gosh, everybody that rode was there. Yeah. Know? But you just get a mental picture of what it's supposed to look like. And I, I wanted to, and I didn't ever accomplish the, what I wanted. Yeah. Possibly riding wise, I'd like to ride better. Oh, wow. But uh, I knew what a good ride was supposed to look like. Not, so I want, I'm going to add to that. So, Kind of a correlation of kind of in the, in the world of the media side that I work on side. Uh, Steven Spielberg talks about the iconic image. And once he has that, whatever that iconic image in his brain, once he sees it, that's what he works to. 
and I'll give you a prime example. And that's what it sounds like here. And then when I think of Saddle Bronc, it is a very iconic image when you talk of when mm-hmm. the perfect ride or the pic- picture of that, right? Uh, Indiana Jones. He had that picture of Indy and how he looked and literally riding next to the, I'm just getting all geeky with you guys oh, now, but great. it makes sense. But he's riding next to that tank, that German tank, mm-hmm. and that's what he saw, that horse, him riding on the horse. It always comes back to the horse. But for Indy, it was, it was riding on that horse, and that's the iconic image he had, and he backed into that with the Indiana Jones story. And, I mean, that sounds like what you're describing here is you had this iconic image at some point in your young career, and there was nothing that was going to get in the way no. of that. And, and I don't think any thing you can do in life is any different than that. Yeah. I, I would go out on a limb and say no sport is any different than that. You focus. It takes focus. Yeah. But you have to know what you want to do before you can do it. Yeah. That's, yeah. Paint the mental picture. Uh-huh. Yeah. Let's talk about some Bronx. Um, nowadays, you see, because you've been probably to every NFR that's since, or most of them that you've retired. Do you see a difference? Obviously, there is a difference with this breeding program and stuff. Talk a little bit. What was your What was your favorite Bronx? Or what do you think the rankest Bronx you ever you ever saw or got on that, that you can remember? Well, I mean, it, it varies from trip to trip. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of good horses. Probably, you know, one of the best horses I ever, that I, that I stayed on was a horse at Dell Hall. It's called Alibi, 59 Alibi. Mm-hmm. And uh, he had an unbelievable trip the first time I had him. And he always bucked, but he was never quite like that. Really? Again. But, uh, gosh, you know, he... He was a, a horse I had a lot of respect for. Not everybody could ride him. No kidding. You know, and, and that's, as far as the nicest horse that I really liked, Kicking Bear was a great little horse. Oh, buried, buried in my house. Really? Yeah, Harry gave him to me. Oh, wow. No, go Kicking yeah. Bear. I remember that from the yes. 80s. Golly. <laughs> and I won a lot on him. And he, he, but he was really a good horse. Been a saddle horse. Uh, actually, some people I know called me last year and said, you know, do you know anything about this kicking bear? I said, oh, he's buried in my house. I know a little oh bit about him. Oh, my brother bought that horse, and they calved on him. Really? Man. But he kept bucking, and they sold him to <laughs> stock contractor, and Harry Bold ended up with him. That, wow. That's interesting. You know, and that, that's such a testament to you bronc riders, and they do it a lot more than any of the other guys, but, like, with Ty in his graveyard, you know, where he – and if you ever watch that, that episode with Ty Murray and – Talking about how he'd, when these Bronx, they'd retire him. He'd say, yeah. bring him to my house. Bring him to my house, you know. Really? Let him, yeah, and, and he's got cool. a graveyard, you know, where they're buried out there. In the, and, and he puts this, he makes this big wrought iron like yeah. a memorial yeah, yeah, to yeah, yeah, him. Yeah. And uh, you need to look at that. It's, really? Yeah, it's very interesting. That is awesome, man. Well, it's an honor because obviously, yeah. you know. That's your teammate. Kind contrary of to what people ish. think, we love these animals and you respect yeah. them so, yeah. so much, you know. Well, without them, you don't. There's no gold buckles. Right. And then there's some you, know you want I mean? to drag over in the burn pile, too, wow. you know, in the devil's <laughs> earth. Yeah. Did you ever get on Try Me of, um, oh, what was his, was it? One what, of, Wayne hauled him. Yeah, Wayne. Yeah. Rex Logan raised Rex him. Rex Logan, yeah. And, uh, I may have been the first guy to ride him at Cloverdale, won the short go at Cloverdale, and then uh, didn't quite make the whistle at Calgary. Really? Probably to win another 50000 Well, you're talking about a mallard. <laughs> he would swoop, wouldn't he? Yeah, <laughs> he had some ducks, swoop yeah. and ducks. And Fuck well, really hard. So, it, let's come back, because, man, it, it sounds like, Clint, just like, I don't know, you guys saddle bronc riders are very, I'm not saying all the other, I'm not saying that the other folks don't do this, but you guys are very calm and strategic driven. Have you ever noticed that? It's Absolutely. so true. Yes. 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 It's, um, <laughs> you, we're really mental guys, right? Now. <laughs> yeah, boy. I like hell we are. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you do, the, the only one that's not like is Sundell, of course, you know, but he's a wildcat. But then he's in his own way. I'm Nothing way, bothers yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but very calm and very just, um, yeah. not saying the rest of the crew is like that, but you guys all have a very similar kind of, um, just a demeanor that's a very kind of a kind soul, but yet I don't think I'd ever want to be on the other side of when you're not kind right? Uh, and the way that is. You know, usually the quiet, nice people are the ones you never want to get in a bad mood. Mm-hmm. So knowing that you, you keep that under control, and this is definitely a mind game, when you were during, here during the rodeo, what did you, this is the other part that's always interesting yeah. to see. What did you guys do in between rounds each day, preparation, sleep, 
what was your kind of your 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 regimen looking like when you were here in Vegas for the rodeo? <clears throat> well, I was on the board. Of, <clears throat> excuse me, I was on the board of directors several of those years, yeah, so yeah. I had meetings and stuff. But typically, uh, stay up late, sleep in late, don't let anything. Yeah, yeah. Never really changed <clears throat> anything that got you here, right? Is that right? I mean, don't don't. Uh, <clears throat> Don't get caught up in the nerves part of it. Yeah. Just uh, get, get as much sleep as you can, but to do that, you stay up, yeah. sleep in. Don't spend all day walking around BSing people. Just yeah. kind of do your job. and Keep your mind right. Ha- have fun if you can, but. Sure. And, and, and as far as fun, don't get me wrong. It is, but yeah. you, you can get, you don't want to get caught up in that. Yep. And, and nor do you want to get caught up in being too serious about it. You, you, yeah. uh. By this time, you should be trained to ride. Yeah. And yeah, all you got to do. Taken care yeah, of. yeah. You should be able to do that. Yep. You just got to get your mind right. Don't change anything. Keep don't. it on task. Yeah, don't change much. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but at that same time, was there, did you, do you have like a practice regimen? And the reason why I say that is because, you know, several individuals, we got this nap. Or Trevor yesterday is saying like, yeah, no, I, I, I two practice. to three was yeah. my practice time. Like, did you take any time in that day to really kind of get your mind right mentally what you were going to do? I mean, or was this kind of just kept flowing through the whole day? Uh, probably once they drew the horses, I like practice from that time on till the time I nodded my head. Yeah, but not not. Uh, I didn't set a time aside. Yep. Truthfully, you try and get it out of your mind a little bit because you you uh, wore yourself out thinking about it all the time, but. And the other reason I bring this up is because today there's a lot of ways to gain information about who you're getting ready to ride that night, you know, because of the internet and things like that, but you didn't really necessarily have too much of that back then. Right. I mean, the the stats on, on, on the, the, the bronc you're getting ready to ride that night. So did you, did you reach out to people or anything like that? If you were going to ride something you hadn't ridden before, like if you hadn't ridden something before, didn't have familiarity, how did you go about kind of getting your mind right to that, to that horse you were going to ride or that bronc you're going to ride? To a certain extent. I mean, everybody has confidence that they, like, you and I might be bronc riders, and I'm like, I don't measure my rein like Ronnie does. I'm, mm. That ain't going to work for me. Right. Yeah. You know, but I know that. And I ask him how much rain go a while takes, and he tells me double X, and I'm like, okay. that's Then I give him a little less than that because we don't measure our rain the same. And then I, but I actually picked those horses for five years as director of so I probably knew the horses better than yeah, anybody. Yeah, yeah. You were but, setting yourself but, uh, up. <laughs> but it, and sometimes I might have been guilty of not asking enough questions, possibly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the the worst thing that can happen to you is uh, getting a mindset in your mind of what a horse is going to do. Yeah. And, oh, I, and yeah. I've learned this later because several times, once at the NFR, I convinced my mind this horse is going to do something. Uh, well, hell, he didn't do it. But I did just what I planned on doing. Yeah, that didn't work out. And that was the wrong thing, right. too. I missed the horse out. He's <laughs> always stalls. Always stalls. Yeah. And if you take a hold of him and really spur him out hard, he's not going to buck, dude. Mm. Well, he don't stall. I miss him out. Oh. You know, and I th- just, my subconscious mind did what it was supposed to do. Right. And uh, so good plans junk sometimes. All right. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's do this for the folks that don't. That maybe don't ride Bronx or understand sure. this. Tell them what X and three are. Explain how you measure the Bronx ride. Oh, I'm all about yeah. this. Yeah, yes. I figured you wanted to yeah, hear this no, part because cool. we we hear every Bronx ride say X. X and three. Yeah. Or, yeah. Oh, you guys are throwing words out. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just trying to like. All right, right, I'm so, just trying to figure out what that is. All right, cool. Well, 101 right here. Yes. Well, X would be like if you laid your hand on the table and from your palm to your into your thumb stretched out, mm-hmm. and you pull that Bronx rein. Uh, you have it. I asked. My horse to stand pretty, to have somebody hold his head pretty straight, kind of up, and I just pull it not too hard across the middle of the swells. Yeah. You put your hand right at the base of the swells, and X would be right at the end of your thumb. Oh, gotcha. And you take that rein in that braid that's right mm-hmm. about there. Yep. And it's it's a guess. And uh, personally, I tried not to make too big a deal out of being one braid off or right. a little bit. Uh, some guys got to get caught up. You know, right. What is what is the most – well, let's say you got one that really bucks with his head straight up instead of all the way down. What would you call that then if, if you were – If you take it at the horns there, where the horn would be. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
X and two would be a, what they used to call wild horse average in South Dakota. If you're getting on horse, you didn't know, hadn't been bucked a lot. Mm-hmm. X and two, which would be a thumb and a couple of fingers, which would be about a braid. I see. I don't. I never split it down to one finger. I, see, I understand. Just you take it in the braid, it happens to fall there. But I think they give horses take a little more rain. Looks like now maybe. I don't. I don't have a bunch of bucking horses myself. Right. But uh, genetics is so strong mm. in all animals, actually. But bucking horses the same way. Yeah. So that's how cha- it's changing a little. There's more horses taking rain. But uh, as far as measuring your rain, everybody basically does it the same, but everybody does it a little different too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's how hard you pull that across the saddle. Yep. You know, there's guys that give horses a lot of rain. Well, they might, maybe they don't. They just pull it over there tighter. Because hell, you can change it at six inches by how hard you pull you on pull their nose. Right. I see. I never pull it real tight because mm-hmm. the less bind you put that horse in, now I just figure the better I get along. Let him buck. Mm-hmm. You know, just not that I wouldn't take hold of his head when, yeah. I, nodded, when I nodded. I'd take a hold of him, but mm-hmm. but far as in the shoot, the less you jack with one. Yeah. Don't put him in a bind. You get along better. So yeah. you've, I, I'm just giving some kind of, the, sure. Once again, I'm just going to give you this kind of. Your hand, don't want to swing that thing as hard as you can. You got to let that club do the work for you. So you kind of find this like middle balance of just find it, but you're not forcing it and just comes right on through. I mean, it sounds like it's very similar where you find this balance where you're not forcing too much, but you're not giving up too much either. You find that yeah. kind of that. The happy middle. Uh, I mean, that, that's what it looks like when I'm watching, and definitely the good ones. When I'm watching one of those Wright brothers, it just seems like they find that kind of that middle, or maybe it's in their blood. I don't even know, but they find that middle ground of that balance. Is that kind of what that is? Well, bronc riding is not about strength. Mm. And, and then maybe that's why you, being a big stout guy, it sure might help you stay on a bucking horse. Yeah. But as far as winning a bronc riding, it might not help you. It, and that's probably why guys don't get so amped up before they get on a bronc. Some guys do, some. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But but it's not as physical, it's more mental. It's all about balance and timing. Yeah. And uh, and just being powerful. You can power through a, a bareback ride a little bit. Yeah, it's a fist fight. Yeah, I mean, you can that be strong sense. and you can be mm-hmm. – and kind of power through some trouble. And the bronc riding, a lot of times that'll – Get you to dust your pants off. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, I got you. You know, it, that makes a, a lot of sense. You know, it's more of a balance and timing issue. It's not yeah. about you don't want to be a weak little guy, but you uh, yeah. just being strong is not necessarily going to make it work for you. Mm. I, so once again, I just this is man, how many interviews this week? Yeah, I can't even wrap my mind around how many we've done, right? But the thing I keep thinking is this: just education process coming through here. You know, an education creates confidence. You know, and, and whatever you do. And I think the more that, you know, I, number one, I'm listening, and people out there that are listening, just, these are things that I think some people assume that everybody knows. Yeah, and, and, yeah and, like and, the X. And, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just think the more that we can get this information out there to the rest of the folks that listen and just learn, and uh, yeah. just, it makes you want to come to a rodeo once you start really understanding what you're going through. And, and it makes you care because you understand the, the trials and tribulations for the contestants which makes you care a lot more about what they're going to go through. And you, you got a lot more understanding of where you might have failed or succeeded. hundred percent. Yeah. So, the, uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I tell, right. explain one more thing because you're going to hear this word again, throat latch. You know, when they, when they say throat latch and one, if they don't want to pull on him or. or. Well, well, normally you would put your bronc rein in the nose band of mm-hmm. the halter. Uh, some horses, maybe they've, hell, maybe they broke them to lead. Maybe they're saddle horses even. And you don't want to get a hold of their nose too much. Mm-hmm. And you'll put your rein up in the in the throat latch yes, of the halter yeah. mm-hmm. and get a little lot of pressure off the nose. Uh, and I I did that some. More, guys today do it more. Really? If, one, uh, if they know one doesn't take a lot yeah, of nose to, to pull I, on them. I didn't ever, I didn't say ever, but a lot of times it wasn't that good of a deal. Really? <laughs> it didn't hinder you. It didn't help the horse, so. I see. Uh, if one uh, pulls you in the throat latch, they'll pull you a lot harder. Oh, they do? Because you can't get older nose. Oh, I see. You, you can't, can't bend their neck yeah. very yeah. good. You can 
get a little on their nose, but I, I don't think it works as good as advertised. I see. No, oh, that's interesting. You know, and I, I never had a lot of trouble with horses throwing their head up and mm-hmm. leaving me. Uh, I found, for me, most of the time, horses buck better when it wasn't in the throw latch. Okay. Mm. Now, I'm not saying there aren't horses that you need to do. There are some you need to do sure. that, probably. But, and there's some horses that won't stick their head in the halter. And they're not saddle broncs. Mm. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Let's bring it back to NFR. Okay. So, you're, you're attached to Mr. Binion. I'm married to his granddaughter. Yes. But one of the things that kind of just, it, it adds to the story of Binion and, and goes through with Michael Gone is the hospitality. Can you kind of touch a little bit on, I mean, people don't realize, you, you mentioned Vegas and the importance of it coming here with NFR. But I think there's another part that really kind of plays out, and we've heard this along with stories this past week about the hospitality. I mean, that's what we're, that's what we do here in Vegas. But these guys actually uh, represented that brand through and through for the Cowboy. I mean, there's some things that Benny has obviously done, not just getting it here, but what he's always done for the Cowboy. Well, long before the finals was here, uh, Vegas had a really good rodeo. Hell, Dorado was a yep. good spring May rodeo, really good. Crowd was amazing. Uh, Cowboy stayed at the horseshoe. Oh, yeah. I didn't know Benny Benny and Denver sure as hell didn't know his granddaughter, but uh, <laughs> and he was hospitable. Gosh, he just loved to go down there. And uh, he, he knew a lot of the Cowboys. Sure. But I guarantee you what, he knew if one of them walked through the door. Oh, nice. There, nothing went on in there he didn't know about. Right on. You know, and it, uh, he, he was an amazing man. Sure. I got the pleasure of getting to meet him. But oh, you did? That was yeah. Me. Oh, yeah. Knew him a little bit because he was real close to my to my wife. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah. No, and, and Michael, because it's the same way. They they're, they got a pretty good thumb on the pulse of that joint, I can tell sure you. Sure, they do. He yes, knows he's do. in town, and, and he takes care of cowboys because he likes them. And, they, and it helps him as well, I hope. Hope that it generates some business for him. Uh, and, and I think Benny... You know, he helped a lot of cowboys too. I mean, there's guys down on our luck he'd help, and he'd try and get them out of a bind if they were in a bind. Mm. But uh, you know, he was very generous to cowboys. That's that's uh, that's such a testament. And you know, like the Gold Coast days, you know, when everybody oh. used to go there. And, and yep. even Ryan Grounty said in one of our shows that oh, yeah. uh, if you had a PRCA card and you were coming through town, you stayed for free. You know, and yeah. he would. Yeah. Now Michael, he's continued it. You know, great guy and. You know, the, the rodeo would not be here without Benny Binion and men like Benny Binion. He wasn't, but he was, uh, he was the one that, that Sean Davis knew, and they knew that his word was good. He said the money would be there, it will be there. And, and they trusted him, and the vote was close, but uh, it was the confidence in him that brought it here. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, remember the bad, don't bet on Vegas and yeah. the other one? 1.6 big ain't a bet. Correct. <laughs> it's not a bet. That's yeah, a bet. You remember those? Yeah. 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 That that story was awesome. Just I mean, me being a Vegas guy, like that, just yeah. to hear that thing, I was like, oh, that's yeah. us, man. That is Las Vegas all, all the way. Yes. A lot of confidence in what you can do for the humans is yep. this place. And it's all about the hospitality. So let's let's fast forward to now. How are you feeling about this competition? I mean, are you, you've you rode all the things, but I mean, are you kind of, an avid fan paying attention to the tour and the riders and things like that? Well, I'm a biggest bronc riding fan that's in town, probably. Nice. I study the horses myself. I, in the Cowboys, I yep. just analyze everything I see, which not always that good, but yeah. I know I, <laughs> I love it. So yes. who, who are you looking at right now that, that's impressing you? I mean, we know where things are kind of boiling down going into tomorrow night. Things are still kind of close, but... Who are you liking right now? A couple guys that you're looking at that you like for now and then maybe coming down for the next few years that because this is a there's a lot of A number one, there's a lot of brothers that are good. There's a lot of competition yeah. within the, in this uh that field. A lot of young talent. Yeah. Uh gosh, you know, Zeke looks tough. Yeah. Rusty always looks tough. Riders having tough finals. Yeah. yeah great guy, great bronc rider, having tough finals. You he'll know, be all right though. He's gonna be Oh yeah, he'll be fine. And he might come on and win the rest of Next two rounds, too, and I hope he does. But, you know, Brody Kress is a young guy. Yes. Injured last year, and he's got his game back this summer. You know, it was, you know, it's hard to come back from an injury like he had and be 
but he's getting it, he's getting it back. He's doing a good job here. You know, there's uh, like I say, there's a lot of talent here. Yeah. So when you're when an athlete when you get hurt, I'm just get this kind of correlation with like NFL. They say if you get hurt at the beginning of the season or coming into the season, there's no healing. You know, and, and I'm imagining the Cowboys always hurt. But you ever had those times where you were hurt and you just wrote it out and you ended up going really well? Or I mean, like, has there been that a lot of that for your during your career? No, I'm. I had a real fortunate career as far as injuries go. I mean, I had some, but uh, I was yeah. lucky enough to, uh, and that was part of my success. I feel I didn't have to come back from a bad, yeah, bad broken leg or something like that. And it's, you know, there's a guy from South Dakota, Jeff Willard, was a mm-hmm. past champion. Jeff uh, only had I was really only see out of one eye. Oh wow. And he broke his leg uh, at the finals, mm. up high, came back and made the NFR. Wow. Whoa. Jeff's my hero. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I, I was, God, it's been a long time since I've heard Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I just, I mean, the injury part is that. And, I, you know, I, I bring that up because of Wade. You yeah. know, I think we're all looking forward to hopefully Wade, you know, because, like, man, he came blazing in oh, and yeah. blazed out. And, and now, you know, the unfortunate situation, I just bring that up because you're just looking at that. How do you – is there always been a Wade Sundell in the Bronco Rider, or is Wade super special compared to a lot of the – I mean, because he just seems very unique, and we got to hang out with him over the summer. I just bring that up because he just – he has a very – he resonates very interesting with people. I mean, do you know Wade at all very well, or – I know him a little bit. Talked yeah. to him last night. No, Wade, interesting character, yeah. Yes. I think really good guy. People really like Wade Sundell. Oh, yeah. And they should. He seems like a – yeah, good even being truly unique. He's he's got a wild side to him, which is part of his mystique, probably. Uh, very talented, great bronc rider. You know, I'm I'm not sure what his injuries are going to bring for him. Uh, he he I mean, he looks pretty well now, or he's getting well. Yeah. Uh, you know, I guess just let your conscience be your guide. I don't yeah. know. I hope he can come back and ride. He's sure exciting, and and uh, as a fan. Yep. Gosh, you gotta love, gotta love watching him. I hope he can. Well, that's why I bring it up is because like, there's people that just stick out from the side of us when we're you know with our social media and everything's like that. He just is a guy that's always stuck out. You know, we work with a lot of guys, Jacobs Crawley, um, Zeke. He's, I mean, the, the great guys, but he just has a very interesting piece. To him. But he also, when he's healthy, he seems like unbeatable sometimes. Like he just has a kind of a sense to him that he he's really good. And I just, you know, I, I wonder if that's always existed in the saddle bronc world. You have this kind of raw talent that just, they just, sh- there's always that kind of one guy that just shows up and it just is, does really well and you can't figure out why. Well, I'd say he's not totally unique, but he's, yeah, yeah. He uh, is somewhat. Turn the, the hotter you turn the heat up, the better he shines. Yeah. Casey you know? Tibbs was like that. Probably too. was, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. That's interesting. I, yeah. I'd hear Casey Tibbs a lot and I don't know much about him, but I know right. he was a bad See, dude. Wade. Back when I I met Wade, um, he was a bull rider. Yeah. And Wade's not he didn't like he was a great bull rider. He went to circuit finals in the in the really I'm pretty sure yeah in, in the Great Lakes up there and he rode he would never been on a bronc ten what I started later yeah. yeah probably ten years and boy I tell you what it just come on and, and hell every once in a while he'll get in the bull ride a few years ago you'd see him yeah. he, he rode one at one of the bigger Washington rodeos I, I can't remember if it was Ellensburg or somewhere he got entered. And, Everybody was cheering, and it's yeah, like, yeah. well, this is normal. So, yeah. but let me bring this up. So, this is, and I was going somewhere with that. So, we were interviewing Stetson Wright over the summer, mm-hmm. and um, we brought up Sage Kimmy, Kimsey talking about, you know, once again, I think we alluded to when we were hanging out with him doing over the strip. He was talking about his, something about his images, and he, he, like, nobody likes the way he photographs because he, he rides very boring, uh, Sage, right? And so, we brought this up with Stetson, and this is where it opened up a little can of worms with Stetson Wright. Um, we started talking about bull riding, which he's doing, but then obviously the whole family is a lot into the bronc riding side. Yeah. <clears throat> he started about the different styles and, and the difficulties, saying that bull riding is easy. And then, like, the hardest is, which I still think bareback looks the hardest, but this is me from the eye test. But he was talking about saddle bronc is the hardest because of the technique and the, and the kind of the mindset. I mean, can you guys add, I mean, both you guys, I mean, both you guys, <clears throat> what's the difference in the styles and the difficulties? You know, for riding rough stock like that. I mean, does that question make sense? You're up, Slugger. Bronc riding is probably more difficult to learn. Mm. Probably physically less demanding. 
but you truthfully in the bronc riding your mid 30s early 30s your best years really experience pays dividends in the bronc yeah, riding. Yeah. oh that's interesting because you know with a bareback rider 30 years old i was Wore beat out. to hell yeah, yeah. and uh, i mean in your 20s yeah like a running back right exactly yeah yeah, but yeah. They always say in the bronc riding, you, you take too much rain to start, and you get jerked down, and then the next one you're afraid and you don't take enough, and out the back you go, don't you? A lot. <laughs> it's a learning process. I mean, I, I rode bareback horses and probably learned to ride barebacks quicker. Oh, wow. I was, I was af- kind of fairly athletic kid, wrestler, and pretty strong. And, nice. And the timing in that is the same. It's about timing and feel <clears throat> on a bucking horse. And a bull, too, I'm sure. I mean, I rode a few bulls, never enough to, right. to know. But yeah. uh, they're different, but they're similar. I mean, mm. it's if you lift on that rigging, then you can spur with your feet. Gotcha. If you're hanging on with your feet, you're not spurring. Right. And that it's the sense. same in the bronc riding. If you're not lifting on your rein, you're not spurring that horse a lot. If you're hanging on to that saddle, you're not, you're not turning your toes out and setting your feet. You're hanging on the saddle. Yep. Isn't that crazy? <clears throat> I know what turn your toes out. I know what that yes. means. Oh, yeah. Isn't it crazy how loose, I mean, when they're talking about that, just the, the terminology of bronc riding, you're so loose in that saddle, you know? And it's, Yeah. Yeah, I think you have to be, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is. If You know, for folks that don't see it, when they see, you know, this week especially, it's highlighted on television and oh, everything, yeah. but you're so loose in that saddle. You're just, you're not bouncing. I mean, but it's all in... Both events, whether it be in lifting on that rigging or lifting on that rain, yeah, and, and lift that is the most important in any well, bull riding. You push and pull, but yeah. you know, lifting and not pulling. If you ever pull, you're falling off. You know, you got to lift. So, was a part of all this when you, when you were riding today? There's a lot of emphasis, obviously, on the we talk about the mind, but the body part of it. Like, how did you truly take care of yourself back then? Because today there's a lot of information of how you can do things, right? You, there's nutrition, there's all those things. I mean, did you, I'm always interested about the cowboy. Some people are like, no, I'm just a cowboy. I don't do anything. I just show up and ride. And, but You've heard of Chris Collinsworth. The yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You asked him what he did during the strike and said he drank a six pack a day and watched Days of Our Lives on TV. <laughs> 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 I wasn't that guy, but, uh, Oh, I kind of tried to watch what I ate. Yeah. Had a lot of fun, but not before I was getting ready to ride. Yeah. Uh, Keep from getting around to ask. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. the main thing. The, what I did when I had a chance <clears throat> yeah. was I tried to ride a horse every day. The month before the finals, I rode every day. Interesting. Bronc? I mean, sure no, enough. Just, oh, just, no, just, just a horse. horse. I didn't get on any Bronx that month before. You didn't? One time I had a school when I got on one. It was oh, fine. Yeah, wasn't a big deal. Yeah, uh, split a few blocks of wood, rode horse every day. Of course, wow. it was winter time in South Dakota. Yes. Oh yeah. But uh, to me, the best I ever felt was when I was in kind of in time with a saddle horse too. Yeah. Right. Was, you're comfortable around a horse. You, of course, you know we ride colts too. I wasn't always riding a gentle horse, wasn't riding a bronc, but I, you just in time, in tune. Yeah. I, I think, uh, and we, I think maybe at times guys lose a little of that because they don't have the opportunities. I was raised on a ranch. I had that right. opportunity, yeah. and, that, and that's how I chose to do it. Mm. And I think that was the best thing for me at any time. Yeah. <clears throat> but before the NFR, that was what I did. So Sat I, on a horse. Yeah, I mean, it sounds yeah, like I you're getting your mind right. I mean, it really does. It sounds like you're, you're, I'm not going to keep overdoing this. I'm going to turn my body inside out. I'm just going to get my mind right. Yeah. And, and, and I've, of course, I practiced mentally. Yep. Not, not, uh, didn't make a big deal out of it. Didn't say I'm going to take an hour a day and like ride Bronx. Psycho. In the no, or something. Yeah. But I, and I think, uh, for me, that was the best thing I could. And I physically, I felt the best doing that. Yeah. Here's an interesting thing as a, as a bareback rider, you know, it's so weird in somebody that competes. Do you ever dream about riding Bronx? You ever had a dream? 
I sell, I sell them get on. I, I get Is right that to not them. the craziest? <laughs> I knew that was coming because it does uh, it to me. Yeah. I have never uh, nodded my damn I don't head. Think I have either. I get ready to. Yeah, and right as, or you can't find your rain, <laughs> or you can't, or you'll be in the grocery store riding, or, <laughs> or in a <laughs> pond. Or, but there is, yeah. I'll guarantee you, everybody in here we've interviewed, very seldom. Do you ever nod your head? No, I don't know why. I guess you'd wake up. If you, yeah, I, I guess so. Or, you know, yeah, they say if you dream when you're, if you're falling, if you hit the ground, you die. You yeah, remember yeah, the old yeah. thing? But I think uh, it, it is. It's so weird. And that's, thank goodness, because I thought it was just me, because I've <laughs> never. And I mean, I'll have the old hopper, you know, and I'm ready to go. And <laughs> But something's always holds you up. Like, say, you yes, it's, can't get your saddle pulled. Or no, or <laughs> I'm late. I couldn't wrong, find right? my glove. Or, or, you know, I'd be riding without chaps. Or, or the, the guys would be like, come on, come on, yeah. Clint. Come yeah, on. Come on, get up here. You're going. And, and is that not the weirdest? Yeah. That is That's so strange. Awesome. <laughs> that is. It, but you've never nodded your head, have you? No, I don't you? think so. Uh-uh. I don't think I've ever got out on one. I bet, you, I bet you a lot of people are. agree with you guys. Uh, that seems is. like it's probably a theme for anyone that competes or does anything <laughs> like that. You're you're still caught in that concept of where you're getting ready to compete at, and you just yeah, you got to get to that point. It's crazy, it? Yeah, it is, yeah. but you've never nodded. That's mm-hmm. awesome. All right, bef- before we wrap this up, let's talk about two different scenarios. What is your, however you want to go with this, what was probably your the worst ride that you can remember? Like just something that kind of go takes you back, and what was one of your best? It doesn't have, I mean, just you got to be able to remember one or two of those scenarios. Uh, you know, it's sometimes you, your best ride is the best ride you could do that day on the horse you had. And I had pretty good luck at the finals in the eliminator pen. Really? And some of those rides weren't really that great, but they were the best rides you could do that day for me. Anyway. <laughs> Ugly, but you got yeah. it done. Yeah, you yeah. know, I won several go arounds in the bad pen and, nice. and maybe I'm the proudest of those. Yeah. But, Worst ride, man. I got a lot of those. Just, just one that kind of, or one that just didn't go. Oh my gosh, in a way that moment. like yeah. completely went uh, a ride that just. It's got to be one. Well, there was a horse that I had half a dozen times. Finally rode, but man, he he stacked me up. Man. Did, you had that one horse that you couldn't. I, yeah. Yeah, I and had he, one he, of long horse <laughs> like that, rowdy yeah, yeah. twenty four, yeah, really and I just it didn't matter. He just had a left turn, and it just bucked me off every time. Yeah. He, and I didn't get bucked off a lot, and he, neither did you. No, but I'm, there's always that one. Yeah, that's no. so similar. What, what, which one do you? What horse was that? Well, Mike Serby had a horse called High Roll, twenty three High Roll. Mm-hmm. He was just kind of an ordinary looking bugger, and he stand right and shoot. You could pull on him or cinch him, whatever you want to do. He didn't care. And I don't know. It's good. I tried several different methods. But, uh, did you? <laughs> did you finally just get mad and say, I hope I draw the damn thing again. I'm no, going to ride him. No. <laughs> I finally did ride him, but it, it didn't matter him anything anyway. He wasn't a good draw. Oh, man. But he'd been in the finals. He was eliminating bucker. Gosh, he bucked lots of guys off. Right. He was kind of a freak. Yeah. No mm-hmm. He was a freak. That's cool. But you could take him short, take him long. didn't really matter. Hell, he'd, he'd be right somewhere in the ride. Yeah. <laughs> what about your best? What was like something that sticks out? You know, just as one that you can go back to right away and walk right through the whole process. Boy, I don't know. Gosh, I, uh, I made a few pretty good rides, but yeah, uh, just you know when you when you can yeah. do. The, there's things that were so important to me. The spur out was especially important. Mm-hmm. Uh, gosh, I you, know, you get on a really nice horse. You know, I had kicking bear at the finals a couple times and, mm-hmm. and made. Rides I was pretty proud of. Yeah. And there are lots of other horses, too. But he was a horse you could get a good picture on if you oh, get really? in the air, you know. But, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, the time I rode Alibi at Kansas City, I was proud of that ride. Nice. Yeah. Sure as hell wasn't probably the best ride. But well, for you. But when before the whistle, he was jumping three foot in the air, and I was two foot out of the saddle, but I made the whistle. Still, <laughs> oh, I'm still trying go. to spur him. Nice. Right? Did you ever get on good times? Yeah, I had good times quite a few times. Really? He was a good horse, yeah. yeah really he was good. cool. Yeah. yeah. Man. In a character. Yes, he was. Real gentle till you got ready to get on him, then he'd go kind of squirrely. They named him after Bill, uh, Alfalfa's dad, Bill Feather. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> good times, Feather. I, I yeah. remember that from the yeah. 80s. I mean, the, like before in Oklahoma yeah. City, I remember uh, no, I had him Hadley too. and them talking about He was him. a really good horse. Bucked, bucked hard, that horse. Man. One of my favorite, real quick, one of my mm-hmm. favorite bronc riding, I was doing uh, Bremerton, and I can't remember the horse. It was from Calgary, and Cody Tayton had him. And he jumps off of him at the end with the rein in his hand, 
and he's sitting there. I wish I could show you right here, but he holds this rein up, and this horse bucks around him about three oh, times. Man. I'm sitting on the fence now, okay? These were, this was right after I had the NFR, so some of the bigger rodeos came after that, and that was one of the bigger Bremerton and that Northwest. Yeah. And I watched him go across there, and this was the coolest thing I've ever seen. He holds this bronc. I'm doing it, but you can't see it, but over his head, takes it behind his rein twice, takes that rein and pitches it to the pickup mm-hmm. man and walks off. And I stood there with my jaw up, and I think, that is the coolest <laughs> thing. That's how little he pulled. I want to say it was Elvis or I don't, one of those good old Bronx that he's retired now, obviously. But he just held that Bronx while standing on the ground after he just jumped off of him, oh, let him buck around him about twice and just kind of did a lasso pitch to uh, oh, Bobby done. Marriott. Oh, off man. they went, and I was like, that was the coolest thing. That, that stands out in my mind. I'll never forget that. Man, I was never cool. that cool. That's <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. I never was. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, you, you're a world champ. I mean, you're you, that's cool. <laughs> or the year Hawkeye got bucked yeah. off in the buck and shoot. Do you remember that? Oh, one? that was something. Yep. Try and, that that, try and do that again. That was reception of Swanee Kirby's. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, he, he, <laughs> tell him about he went, it. Did you see that? No, you seen huh? it? no, 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 no. Reception was a really good horse. Circle around to the left. Making a pretty good ride, comes right around the chutes, shoots him right down in the chute, and Mel Coleman's getting on Jinx Ghost, I think. Yep, big gray. And, uh, <laughs> right into the bottom of the chute. Nice. In the right front, in front of, of Jinx. And Jinx oh. Ghost's not a pet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's got him all held up. She's rearing up, and, and they sling the gate open, and he gets out and gives it the hot man. Give it to you. <laughs> yeah, give it to you, hot man. Hot man. And he, Oh, man. Yeah, you got to watch that video. I'll find that yeah, for you yeah, today, yeah. and you're going to go, yeah, you holy cow. Yeah. Well, I don't think Mel Coleman was too proud of him. He kind of wanted on Jinx Ghost. They had to turn her out. Yep. Oh, did he not get to ride? Uh-uh. No, he'd get on a different one. Oh, no wow. kidding. They let one out of the chute. They don't bring it back. No. <laughs> Golly. Well, speaking of that, do you, do, you, do you jump on the internet a lot, Clint? Or, or like, have you jumped on YouTube? Sometimes. So what I love about it is, you know, there's so much um, on the side of rodeo today. There's been a lot of people that put a lot of these rides, and that's actually where I found some of the stuff uh, looking at you. Um, how do you like where where rodeo is at today? As far as like, you never would have probably never thought the internet would help right. out rodeo, but I mean, how do you like where rodeo is at today compared to where when you were? Well, I love to watch rodeo, and you can sure see a lot more rodeo now. Yeah, I mean the. Rodeo TV, Wrangler Network, yep. Ride Pass, just to name it. If you flow rodeo, man, yep. there's a lot of yes. good venues out there. You can, gosh, if you want to watch rodeo, you can watch it. Yeah. Right? I mean, I, the reason why I bring that up is because when you were riding, there was probably only one camera to one outlet. Yeah. Like an ESPN type concept. And today, to that point, that's why I bring that up. Uh, we've talked about this with Jeff Matters, you know, from, from CBS Sports or from Geronimo Productions that today there is more exposure for rodeo than ever been yeah and you, you get a lot of this breakdown it's good to watch. i mean i for the fan that really likes to watch rodeo yeah. you can you can you can get a lot before i mean if you didn't watch cheyenne on abc sports with kirk dowdy and, or heston's last round yeah, of the yeah, nfr yeah, Mike, or mesquite part of the last round of the nfr yeah. and yep. then, then mesquite was on tv guys. yeah People ask me all the time, you ride a mesquite. I right. told you, didn't I? I uh, mesquite comes up a lot here. Yeah, you're not a country music yeah. singer if you're not in Nashville, and you ain't no cowboy if you wasn't on <laughs> mesquite. mesquite. Well, listen That's to Donnie Gay, like, by yeah. <laughs> Robbie Vaccaro's a household word. Well, you better believe it. Don't yeah. crash. I yeah. saw him the other day. Yeah, I've seen him too. He's That's great, man. Uh, Clint, this is this has been awesome. Yeah. Uh, you've you, you didn't think you were gonna be. I, this happens every time. You yeah. say you're not gonna talk. You're not gonna share. The Bronc riders out there, once again, if you were if you're listening, there's it's Bronc riding 101 here. Yeah, I mean, I thank you for coming on the show. This is awesome, and share some pretty good Surprised information. Surprised yourself, people, yeah. <laughs> I didn't do much. You guys helped me out here. Oh, hey, thanks a lot. I appreciate you it. You bet. Yeah. Well, yeah, we never want to forget you guys. I mean, just because mm-hmm. it's been you know, you say 30 years, I don't believe it's been that long because sorry, but yeah, uh, it's crazy. But you know, we we never forget that, and I think it does a disservice when you don't have guys like him, and, yeah. and you know the ones we've had on this thing. I think it's a disservice not to remember those guys because I guarantee them guys, them 15 guys, them saddles in that locker room, remember them. Yeah. Well, it, remember that the whole point of this podcast is the 360 view of rodeo and how many people are part of it, and and the more that we keep chugging along with this thing. Well, look, we had Randy Bloomer on here, right? If a person looking on the outside went, well, why do you got a trailer guy? Well, 
if you listen to Randy, you'd understand why we oh, had yeah. him on, you know? He was awesome. Man. Yeah. yeah. Was and, awesome. And, 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 and same with you, Clint. I mean, it, once again, 30 years ago, you were doing your thing, but the information that you're sharing today, it, we put this thing and we, we store it forever. So, I mean, it, 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 it the stories get out there and people start learning more about rodeo. And I truly believe the more they learn about rodeo, the more they're going to care, they're going to want to come. And the more you get to experience, you just, it doesn't end. Cause that's the other part is there's rodeos everywhere all over the country. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. for sure. That's for why sure. we're going to continue at rodeos all, all year. And yeah. I mean, that's going to be our thing here. Yeah. Give somebody the, the fans and the contestants something yeah. nice to. So well, you give some insight you can't get just watching it. Well, thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Appreciate it. But even the Binion stuff, you know, a lot of people don't know that either. I mean, yeah. that's why we want to yeah. drive that home. So Clint, thank you for coming on the show. Oh, you're very welcome. Have yeah. a great day, guys. Appreciate thank it. you. Yeah. Thanks for listening to the NFR Extra podcast. Make sure to give us a review and rating on wherever you listen to NFR Extra. For more information regarding the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo, visit nfrexperience.com and follow Las Vegas NFR on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube. Gotta make it out to Vegas where the big boys roam with the Rovers and the Racers and the Bulls and the Browns and the ladies in the skin-tight Wranglers and the Cowboys.